Okay, so you can understand. We have here in the first 10 seconds, four policemen, four Dutch policemen, manhandling an African lady who just had a baby five weeks ago. They're trying to take the baby away from her. And this lady just had an operation. She delivered via C-section. And for those of you who have experience, C-section and any other kind of growth takes time for healing process to take in. So five weeks only, she's had a major operation. C-section is a big operation. They open your stomach, basically, to take the baby out. And she's been manhandled by four policemen, three men and one woman. And if you look at it very closely, you can see she's fighting, saying, I cannot live without my baby. So they're basically trying to take the baby away from her. As you can see, I'm sure you've been very familiar with these type of pictures for now. It happens for most cases in America, maybe because America broadcasts it quite a bit, but it happens all across the world. This lady is married to a white man, a Dutch man, and he called the police on his wife. And in front of him, this is how the police is handling his wife. And he is the one that's filming or shooting this video. Watch. Okay, we know we know. It's all Here, I just had an operation. Hi. Yes, I just had an operation. Yeah. He says that I have the right to stay. Association say you can call the association. They are the one that told me. He has no right to put me out of the house. Yeah. Do you guys? Maar als je hier niet in staat, yes, in de gemeente, that is the, dan kan je niet te doen. The, the association yeah. have my gezegd. Because that I told them. Yeah. So far, they are helping here to me. you are taking the baby's life in a risk with your behavior yes mm -hmm. Talk some facts, man. Please. Welke spullen wil je welke spullen wil je meenemen? Anders gaan we daar naar je buiten begeleiden. Ik ben gewoon bij hem. So we are done with arguing. You can pack the stuff now. If you are done with the stuff now, we are going to help you outside our room. Oké. Ja, jongens, laat het door. Okay, from what you understand here, she's saying he has no right to throw me out. So basically, from what we understand, he's asking the police to throw her out. Okay, she says the society perhaps would have the rights to throw her out, not the husband. But again, as you can see here, you are faced with a situation with an African lady married to a Dutch man. This is proper Dutch man. Okay? This is real Dutch man. This is real Hollanders. And what's painful to me is the stance, the defensiveness. Look at the policeman standing here. This is a woman that just gave birth five weeks ago. No empathy. And also the white police woman has a zero empathy for another woman who's just given birth to a baby. Not even saying, okay, let's go easy. You know, she's a lady. Let me talk to her. Or let, let's, let's hold on a second. She's got a wound that's not healed. Not at all. I mean, yeah, I think this should be a very good lesson for many of our sisters that believe that marrying the other side is necessarily best. Yeah, because uh, you, you see in many places, especially Kenya, okay? Kenya is the top of the range. South Africa as well, for those, of, yeah. And some other countries, uh, uh, Nigeria, you see that in Cote d'Ivoire, you see that in Congo, you know, uh, in many African countries, people feel like if you marry, you know what I'm talking about, you're like superior to other people. They don't even talk to you nicely anymore. They don't even greet you back when you say hello. They just look at the, these peasants, these peasants again, they're trying to greet us. Yeah, 
And, and it doesn't even have to be marriage. It's just the fact of I'm dating somebody from a different group. You know, I'm not going to use those words. I'm dating somebody from a different skin, a better skin. It's like a level up. You know what I mean? In the meantime, if another African comes from another African country coming to look to marry somebody of your own, you're going to ask many questions. Who is he? Where does he come from? Are you saying all of these men in our countries, there's nobody that's good enough for you? Why are you looking for another man from Kenya? Why do you need another man from Sudan? But if he's got a light skin, you don't even ask. You don't even want to know where he come from. Or you want to know, oh, is, he, is he the one? Oh, that's it. So now you can see they're trying to take her out. Look at this. Look how they're trying to take her out. If you look very carefully, you will see them trying to punch her on the back. Look, look how they're punching her on the back. Punching a woman that just given birth to a baby five weeks ago on the back. She's still raw, still tender. And look again, look here, they want to punch her in the stomach on the side. Look at that. Oh, we can't show you everything because, yeah, the video will just get censored and taken down maybe. But this is, this is the truth. This is the reality. Do you think they would have treated the Dutch woman like that? Do you think if she was Dutch and white, she would have been subject to that type of treatment? If she as a Dutch woman got subjected to this, would the human rights, the social workers, the government let this slide? No. It's very sad to see this. Yes, fellas, uh, marrying the other side is not necessarily good. I'm a firm believer that... Um, if you find somebody good, it doesn't matter where they come from. I don't believe we are linked to be married into countries. I don't think so. I don't think a South African has to marry necessarily a South African to be happy. I don't think a Ugandan has to be happy by just marrying a Ugandan person. I don't believe so. I think people are made for people. There are people for people, really. There are people for people. Or else you would have never seen any South African getting divorced. You'd have never seen any Rwandese get divorced because the woman is Rwandese, the man is Rwandese. Many people will say to you, if you marry, marry somebody from your culture, it's going to be easy and stuff. Yeah, on paper, it looks like it's going to be easy. But practically, is it easy? It's not because the reality is people from your tribe marry each other, then they divorce. Sometimes people from far away meet each other and they function together because tribes and countries and stuff, it's a lie. We're human beings. The bottom line is when you die, when your skin goes off, it's just a skull. The truth is we're talking about Holland. This is Holland. This is a patriotic movement where you have men as a head. If you have somebody like that guy calling the police and say you're wrong, you as a black woman, she's from Angola. Do you think they're going to believe him or they're going to believe you? They're going to believe him. And it's very sad. It looks like a very toxic relationship because listen to what she had to say. Good day, everyone. I'm Patricia, Mikael's mother. I come this way, first of all, to thank the Consulate uh, Geral of Angola in the Netherlands and uh, everybody for all the support, for all the love that I've been getting. Uh, and I would like to clarify that uh, I don't have my baby. Um, my baby is taken away from me by the Dutch government and I'm still fighting uh, to get my baby back. And I, um, I would like to ask for help, yes, financial help um, for the lawyer, to help to pay the lawyer. And yes, I'm in war, we are in war, we are in all of this together. And uh, once again, I would like to thank everybody for all the love and support. Thank you very much. From what we gathered, they took the baby away from them. So the man and the woman don't have the baby anymore. It looks to me like a couple that's had a fight or have several fights many times, basically a toxic relationship where you bring the extreme, you call the police on somebody. Then later on, you change your mind. Oh, I shouldn't have done that because now they've taken the child away from both of them. Now listen to him talk. Brother of Mikael, and uh, I need to tell something. First of all, all of this situation didn't happen because I want to take Mikael away or something. All of this happened because I just wanted to find the best solution for my family. After all, it was not me, but the government that fucked up this whole situation. Let's put that on first. Because still till the day of the day, I'm fighting with my woman for to have our son back. And it's hurting both of us, you know. I, I lost my son. My wife lost my son, police put us, put us up against each other. And that whole evening what happened, I don't have to tell it on internet, but all I need to tell is that I was the one trying to keep my patience. And 
I started to panic and I didn't want to escalate the situation so I thought maybe if I call the police it will calm down the situation but instead of that it calmed down they put me in, in front of fucked up shit that they beat the top my woman and that they took away my child and it's never ever ever the intention if you call the police to that they beat up your woman or something what the fuck who wants that nobody i thought they will come with a solution or something but no they did it they made it a whole scene from it but now i'm still together with patricia fighting against this for against this government that doing this to the both of us because we are sitting here in this audio next to each other <sighs> and first of all it's also like people are thinking wrong about me on the internet i'm in this fight together with patricia together against this government i'm not the one fighting against patricia the government is fighting against patricia we are holding each other's hand now because we are we are desperate you know we need help in this one because this government they are using all these powers to take our baby away our baby that we have made with love that we all both wanted you know we love our baby and we want our baby back that's all we both want from what we understand you he's saying they took the baby away from me and away from her that shows you this is a very toxic relationship this is not the first time they fight each other all the time and I know, uh, you know, some of us have to repent ourselves thinking that uh, they are perfect. They are good. Because a lot of you think if you marry somebody from Europe, you marry a white man, you're going to be happy. You're going to be fine. No, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. In some instances, you find some people that are really, really cool. They're going to treat you easy. You're not going to have to worry about them cheating on you. There's no doubt about that. They're not going to abandon your child in most cases like most of other people will do. We can give you that. But when it comes to some weird stuff that may occur and happen, you have no idea. I mean, in recent uh, couple of days, I've received many videos and another one from uh, um, Czech, Czech, Czech Republic from an African woman married to a Czech man. He sent the neighbors to beat her up and throw her out of the house. It's crazy. And how many times do you get a black man doing that to her? I'm just saying, because in most cases, black men treat them really, really good. Better than they treat our own sisters. I'm just saying. Not to say that black women do different things, because black women also treat them much better than they treat us. They're more tolerant, more giving, more open. Yes. So that's what it is, fellas. I think you need to water your garden where it is. Water your garden, look after it, take care of it. Um, happiness is not necessarily on the other side. And you must be very careful. When you find yourself in places like this, you're a foreigner. It doesn't matter how long you've stayed. You know, I've lived in most of these countries. I've been to Holland many, many times. I've stayed there for a while, preparing for kickboxing fights and stuff. Um, they're generally good, good people. But uh, I don't think I've witnessed this type of situation because I'm not married to, a, uh, to one of them like that. So it's very sad to see a situation like this. Let me know how you feel about this. Um, it's a great pleasure. What can she do? Is this something... Do they have a future? Should she reconsider? Should she pack her stuff and look for somebody similar to her? Would she be successful? Is it a guarantee? Or is this just a purely toxic relationship like any other relationship? Nothing to do with race. God bless.